Landar's principle uh, is something we think of a lot when we're talking about the relationship between energy and information in physics. So if you have uh, a system uh, that's in contact with a thermal reservoir at a temperature T, and uh, it's controlled by some uh, external Hamiltonian, uh, which uh, couples it to a work reservoir, uh, you find that the work required to erase a bit is at least kT log 2. Wolpert uh, covered this nicely in his talk. Um, and the more general form of it is bounds the work required to compute uh, for a particular computation um, by the change in Shannon entropy. But this is um, only uh, achieved in uh, the limit where the change in uh, entropy of the total of the universe, which is the change in entropy of the thermal reservoir plus the change in entropy of the system, it's only achieved when that's equal to zero. Because uh, the work, which is the uh, change in energy due to changes in the control parameter, due to control of the system, is equal to the change in non-equilibrium free energy in that case. But the question is, can we achieve this bound? According to the thermodynamics of control, probably not. Uh, we see that there are a ton of ways to dissipate, um, one of which uh, David Wolpert already discussed, which is that uh, if, if you have some sort of computation, you have an anticipated input distribution, which constitutes a prior that you have to build into your system. And if your actual distribution uh, differs from that, then the, um, the difference in the uh, relative entropies between the uh, initial and final um, states uh, corresponds to dissipation. Similarly, if you have uh, a modular system in which you only have control of a limited piece of your uh, uh, informational variables, so this is the only piece that you control right here, and the rest is effectively decoupled from you, then you find that the minimum uh, dissipation associated with the computation is equal to the uh, reduction in the uh, correlations between your controlled system and its environment. This is the modularity dissipation, and uh, it can be used to prove uh, the principle of requisite complexity, which is that modular agents must match the complexity of their environment in order to be thermodynamically efficient. So uh, this is another source of dissipation beyond the land error bound. Uh, another uh, source of dissipation we found recently is that um, if you are constrained to control time symmetrically, which is the case for a lot of modern computers, um, the uh, dissipation scales as the non-reciprocity of uh, your computation, which is essentially the non-self-invertibility of it. And in the limit of uh, uh, low error, uh, you find that the work uh, scales as log, over one, log of one over the error, uh, which is divergent and much higher than the energy cost. And if you go to, say, counter diabatic precise control of Langevin systems, you find that the dissip minimum uh, dissipated, uh, uh, the minimum dissipation is proportional to the length scale of the system that you're controlling, uh, divided by the time you're allowed to control it over. So most computations happen in finite time, and that finite time puts a constraint on your uh, uh, dissipation, the faster you go, the more you dissipate. Similarly, as you uh, increase the lifetime of your information, that corresponds to dissipation. So I'll just conclude by saying, are we doomed to dissipate? Well, maybe if we go to question some assumptions about uh, control without feedback and uh, thermal reservoirs that don't feed back directly on their system and uh, evaluate entropy with uh, that includes coupling between systems, we'll see some different bounds.